Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 285. I am Brendan. All right, we're going to cover in PFL number six from 2023. This is the last regular season event of the PFL this year. This sets in place all the playoffs, which we will go over really quick. We're going to try and fly through these fights. There's a lot of, well, there was a lot of finishes, but they happen to be in the later rounds. So we will get into those. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel because I do cover the PFL. I do fight breakdowns. If you're looking for a certain fight, the timestamps are down below. So that way, you know, when the next video is coming out, if you're subscribed, it helps me out as well. I'd super appreciate it. All right. This is Olivier Obal Mercier versus Anthony Romero. This was the primary, the, the main event fight. There's also some news about some of these fights after we'll go through as we get into them. So uh, OAM, uh, he was the champion from last year doing a great job. I mean, he does what he does, right? He's a hard worker. He's a, a heavy grappler. He also can strike when he needs to. Uh, and he obviously got the knockout for the win last year to win the million dollars. He started with the kicks of the body. OAM landing a hard body kick. OAM keeping the pressure on with that landing the right hook. Um, Romero uh, landing a front kick to the face and OEM had to retreat for a second. That was the best shot of the first round from Romero. And then uh, another hard left uh, straight landed as a counter. Uh, from OAM, and then OAM did enough damage in this first round to win, in my opinion. I wouldn't say he was hurt because we were ne we never were given to see like time to see when he fell back or not fall retreated. So I had him up ten nine. OAM was right back in there, the same place he was in the first round. Gets right back in his face. Romero's finding some spots to land low kicks, but he just doesn't have enough output. Two headbutts in this round. Actually, actually, three headbutts in this round. Too many of those. Uh, close round again, or a close round, but I gave OAM uh, this this round for the amount of damage and the amount of volume he put out there, 20 to 18. And then the last round here, Romero was trying to hold his ground a little bit better, but holy shit, this left kick comes up there and the, the knee hits and puts him out to sleep. Oh, man, that was rough. Uh, yeah, he hit him really freaking hard with that one. Woof. Watch it one more time here. Bam. Yeah, and that's the end of that. <clears throat> Great fight for OAM, and obviously he's in the playoffs. Uh, moving on here. All right, Sadabu C taking on uh, Shane Mitchell. Uh, I, I'll be right up front here. I am not a fan of Sadabu C. I don't like his fighting style. I don't like the fact that he was in the playoffs at, at all last year. He had a split decision win. That was total bullshit. Nobody thought he won except for the two judges who gave him the decision. So, uh, And maybe him and his mom. So there's... I, I'm not a fan of his fighting style, his retreating fighting style. He's got this Israel Adesanya type of um, movement to him without this, without putting himself in danger. He's, he's the safest fighter I've ever seen, and he just uses the kickboxing, and I think he takes advantage of some of the PFL's uh, scoring system and rule set. Um, the fact that you know he just has to win, and then he also... He's gotten finishes this year against lesser competition, I might add, but so he was kicking to the body... Um, with uh, Shane Ray's in the front led to defend really well. It just looked like a kickboxing match for most of the time. Uh, he was landing more damage. Mitchell landed a hard right hand at one point, but he wasn't able to get in range and see. He's really he's also super tall for this division. He's six foot three at 170 pounds, so he just uses his range and keeps people away. And he hasn't fought a ton of grapplers and uh, or, or quality grapplers. So uh, and, and because he ends up he ends up winning this fight. In the second round here, he was uh, tripping on the cage as he ran backwards. Uh, you know, he landed. Um, oh, he landed a hard kick to the body uh, that sh uh, staggered Mitchell, and then he threw some rabbit punches to try to get the TKO finish. I've never seen any any fighter try to do that. Um, I've seen versions of it, but the way he was throwing it, it was like he was doing the cardio work on the heavy bag. Where he goes, da -da 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 um, you know, none of those none of those punches are are intended to do any damage or end the fight. They're just there to put offense out there in order to get the referee to stop it. So he was trying to get a TKO finish there. It didn't happen. So, you know, he's 20, 20 to 18 going to the third. Obviously, he's going to make the playoffs already. Um, he starts he threw some uh, spinning back kicks and he didn't land any until this third round. Um, and then he landed it real smooth. I mean, it was a great kick. There's nothing. I, dude, that's as smooth as it can be. Great kick. He's got really good striking, right? I just don't like the way the guy uses his striking. I don't like the way he fights. I think he's taken advantage of the system, um, and I just I just don't appreciate it, right? Um, it, it, his attitude also towards um, his opponents after, like, he has these, like, he had these really close fights last year, and he's just like, oh, clearly I won. Like, no, you didn't. Anyway, moving on. Shane Burgos versus Yamato Nishikawa. This was a great Great performance by Shane Burgos. Not enough to get him in the playoffs initially. We will talk about that later. 
And Burgos was active with the hands early. Nishikawa was going for the legs, like he was going for the leg kicks. Uh, Nishikawa was putting a ton out there as he retreats. Um, Burgos was trying to corral him. Uh, he, You know, he uh, he just gets his takedown, and he wasn't able to get the finish, and he was clearly looking for it in the first round. And then he was kind of, it wasn't that he was dejected, but you could tell in the second round, he gets, because obviously he wins the first round 10-9. Second round, he gets a body lock slam, um, and then gets a, you know, he keeps Nishikawa down the entire time, and you could tell he was kind of going for the finish, but it was kind, it was over at this point, right? He needed that first round finish to guarantee his, uh, a place in the playoffs, and he just he didn't get it. <clears throat> so then in this round, he does the same thing. Um, it, it, in the third round, he does the same thing, put, puts him on his back, and then he just ground and pounds the entire time. It wasn't a, dom- a dominant performance in that he did a ton of damage. It was just positionally, he just kept him um, kept him on the ground, and he laid out enough damage to keep 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 him there without getting stood up. I thought he put on a great performance for a normal MMA fight, but in the PFL when you when he doesn't have a win already in the season and he needs a finish to get in the playoffs, I thought it was not a letdown for me, but a bummer that he couldn't get it done. We'll talk about how that changed in a second here. <clears throat> Magomed Magomed Karimov versus David Zawada. All right, so Magomed Magomed Karimov is the uh the legitimate champion of the division. He couldn't come in Last year, because of uh, visa issues, and uh, he landed a right high kick um, that Zawada caught at one point early on. They're exchanging kicks at low range. Right hand landed for Magomed, um, and a low kick. There, you know, Zawada had his moments in here for as long as it la- uh, lasted, but Magomed was just. It looked like he was trying to get his timing right, and then once he did get his timing, he lands something like this, and then it's just all over. Lights out. Uh, unbelievable right hand, and it's over. Yeah. <clears throat> Hard, hard right hand, and Magomed is the uh, number one seed, which means he will not be facing Sadabusi unless it's in the uh, the finals. So, uh, you know, Sadabusi dodges a bullet there <clears throat> because he would have been probably would have been out of the playoffs early uh, in the first fight. Magomed Umulatov versus uh, Naib Lopez. This one was interesting because uh, Umalatov put some t- crazy pressure on him early, uh, landed a right hand, uh, controlling in the clinch. Uh, he landed a knee to the body, and in the clinch, Lopez is huddled over, retreating, trying to swing back. Lopez went for a takedown a 1,000 feet away, and Umalatov took the back and started landing some of this nasty ground and pound. I, you know, it was a 10-8 round for me. Lopez get, gets back up after all the damage, but it, I had it a 10-8. Second round here, Umalatov used a ton of energy in that first round, so he was not able to to uh, maintain it. Clearly, he, he was a little bit gassed out, gassed out here. Umulatov was still able to land the right hand. Lopez landing with the jab. Um, Lopez was keeping the pressure up, and Umulatov was landing hard shots as um, Lopez was moving in. You know, anytime Lopez would commit to anything, so anytime he would move in for a strike, Umulatov would counter. It's not that Lopez wouldn't, en- um, <clears throat> wouldn't land on him. He would once in a while. It's just Umlatov got the better of those exchanges, and he ends up getting the takedown at the end of the round as well. I gave it, the, gave him that round. I had him up twenty to seventeen. Big right hand from Umlatov again to start this last round. Nice right hook from Lopez. Um, it landed really hard, <clears throat> but uh, in this in this last round, Umlatov with the takedown and he held it there for most of the time, um, and he did little bits <clears throat> to end the fight. Um, a little bit here and there as the fight ended. So I had a 30-26. All three judges <clears throat> saw it in favor of Umlatov. One judge had a 29-28. The other two, <clears throat> actually 29-26. So the only guy, <clears throat> Umlatov. Man. Uh, man had it 29-27, to right? Which means the only guy who gave him a 10-8 round in that first round also gave the third round. My guess would be the third round. Uh, the third round to Lopez, and then here over here, you know, the other two guys uh, gave it uh, thirty to twenty-seven. Fisher and Marilano, Marilano. Uh, good fight for Umlatov, and both guys were undefeated before, so it's you know he, he's he's in the playoffs now. It's going to be fun to see him in there. I'm excited. I, I actually am excited for the playoffs, guys. I think it's going to be fun. Okie dokie here. Clay Collard. Clay Collard taking on Stevie Ray. All right, Clay Collard, obviously the boxing specialist versus Stevie Ray with the grappling. Clay landing some damage to the lead leg early. Ray got the takedown, get in the back with Clay trying to shake him off for a while. It was an awkward position where Clay was on all fours, but he was stilted, right? So his his back legs were straight, and he's trying to shake uh, Collard off the front of him. Sorry, shake Stevie Ray off the front of him. 
Uh, Ray was, Collard was uh, digging to the bot, and he wasn't able to stay on him, even though he was out there for like a minute. He wasn't able to get anything done. <clears throat> so Collard was digging to the body, staying in the pocket, slipping shots. Ray wasn't able to get the sub finish, and that means no playoffs for him anyway. So the round was Collard's 10 9. Second round here, right, hard right hand drops Ray um, to start the second round. And then Collard in his face, again, Collard was in his face the entire time, landing some serious damage and gets a ground and pound TKO. So uh, he got the finish here in the second round, boosting him into the playoffs, making him the number one seed. Great win for Collard. And yes, uh, Ray gets up after this, and I thought the stoppage was a little early just because he was defending, but th this was not the worst stoppage of the night, I will tell you. Um, there was a much worse stoppage. Not that it super matters. All right, Carlos Leal taking on Delano Taylor. <clears throat> All right, Carlos Leal, uh, you know, looking for a finish here to, to secure his place in the uh, in the playoffs. Um, Taylor was using the jab to the chest because of his long reach. Leal started to pressure forward, but Taylor was keeping the strikes out there, making it hard for Leal to move in. Um, Taylor was counting well with the right hand, landing hard. Uh, the volume from Taylor was really giving Leal pause. Uh, Leal putting the pressure on towards the end of the round in his face, swinging hooks, um, and he was coming on at the end of that round, but I had... Uh, I thought Taylor outdid him for that first round, 10-9. Second round, Leal was staying on him, not letting Taylor breathe, and then Leal landed a right hand, putting Taylor on wobbly, le wobbly legs, finishing up with a ton of hooks and putting him out to sleep. There's that right hand, gets in his face with the hooks, just does not stop, does not let up, and keeps going at him and puts him out, out, out. Yep. <clears throat> Crazy. Crazy hard shot right there. Okay. <clears throat> Anton Schultz versus Hausch Manfio. Now, I do have some stuff to say about this one, and we'll get into it. <clears throat> so neither guy doing anything to set them out in front as they're just sparring for the first two minutes here, and then Schultz with the takedown, and that's the rest of the round. Can't expect them to kill each other since they are best friends. Uh, one of them is the other one's uh, uh, kid's godfather. Like These guys are very close. They're not just teammates. Uh, second round here, Schultz with the takedown again. They really don't want to hit each other. The ref separates them because of lack of action. Schultz ends the round with another takedown, 20 to 18 in his favor. Schultz with another takedown to, in this third round. And then he ends up sitting on him the whole time. Now, and he gets a 30-27 finish in my opinion and then makes the, he, he should be in the playoffs. Now we will look at the playoff standings later and we'll talk about this. Um, Nate, uh, Natan Schultz and Hausch Manfio are, are best friends. And... They fight out of the same team. You know, they're basically family members. A similar. This is a similar situation, you could say, to like, uh, because they're in the same division, uh, to Aljamain Sterling and uh, Poop. Rob, uh, Marab Devajvili. Right, so they Marab, they refuse to fight each other because they consider each other family. I have no problem with that. Some people do. Some people say it's stupid, but to each their own, and that's what they decided. I actually, I, I it's not that I admire it. I think it's understandable that a, a man who comes to a new country and is taken under the wing and then um, ha helped along the way in the career, and who knows what else is going on in their lives that Heljermaine Sterling has helped him with, but he has so much respect for him, he refuses to fight him, right? <clears throat> now, this is, seems like a similar situation. It might be even closer. It might be not, but whatever. They refuse to, they don't want to fight each other. Now, in the UFC, Marab and Aljamain are never going to fight each other because they won't agree to it. They just said, they'll say, I won't fight. I won't fight him. I won't fight him. I'm not signing the contract. And that's the end of it. With the PFL, you don't have that option. They put out the season and you have to fight who you have to fight. This is the PFL, PFL's fault. Why the fuck would you make them fight each other? Why the fuck would you make them fight each other? Put someone else in there. Unless it's for the, mil the and you can say, oh, well, if they're fighting in the playoffs, they might have to fight each other. Sure. In the playoffs or for a million dollars. Sure. And I'm sure they would actually, you know, they realize like, hey, you know, we're going to have to go. And then if they, they're in that situation, now we can talk about it. But this is the regular season. Why are you having them fight each other? You can have them fight literally anyone else in the division. But you chose to make them fight each other. And now you're going to punish them because they both get they both got suspended by the PFL from this. Even though Natan Schultz was supposed to be in the playoffs. So we will talk about that when we go look at the rankings. Total bullshit. 
Not happy about that. Alexander Martinez versus Bruno Miranda. Uh, push kick from Martinez puts Miranda on his ass for a second. <clears throat> this is actually a really close fight. Trade kicks. Martinez landing the left hand, staggering Miranda for a second. Huge left hook drops Martinez. Uh, Miranda right back um, to the hard low kicks. Close round with Miranda putting more of a mark on it for me with the hard low kicks, and he had a, knock, a big knockdown in that round. 10 9. Uh, Martinez is fighting through the pain in that lead left leg and start uh, landing a straight right hand, but he can't stay orthodox for any amount of time. Martinez increasing his output despite the leg, and Miranda looks like he's slowing down just a bit. He's digging. Uh, Martinez starts digging hard, uh, hard kicks to the body, and I think he got this round with the volume. He really fought through the pain in that lead leg and worked, worked through it. <clears throat> And kept aggressive. 19-19 going to the last round. Miranda is up, upping the aggression, digging to the body, and Martinez gets a takedown. Doesn't do anything with it. They'll just have him down for a second. Doesn't land anything. In fact, he was defending a heel hook. Miranda lands uh, a right hand and then a left hook to the body. He starts walking Martinez down. Martinez looking for the clinch. He's he's kind of gassed now, and I think the damage is adding up for him. The damage in this last round definitely goes to Miranda for me. Martinez did fine, but he only really had a minuscule amount of positional control. Uh, there was a this was a split decision win in favor of Miranda uh, Fisher here. Let's see here, what's his name? Will Fisher gave it to. Uh, gave it to Martinez. The other two, Mann and uh, Marigliano, both gave it to <clears throat> um, Miranda. That's how I saw it. And then the last regular season, or the first regular season fight for the night, but the last one that I'm going to cover, Jara Al-Salawi taking on Solomon Renfro. <clears throat> so they trade kicks going low to the body. Renfro Renfro keeps trying to throw hooks, but he's just out of range. And also, we probably got that round with the low kick. So this first round was, you know, Renfro just couldn't find his range. And the second round, a big left hand landing from Renfro and the right hand putting Salawi out cold. So, yeah, I think he found his range just a little bit. Left hand, right hand, and out. Out. Oof. Oh, man. Uh, that is it for the regular season. There was two other fights, but I want to get into, and I did cover them. So if you guys have questions about them or if you want to talk about them, I'm more than more more than open to talk about those things. We can talk about them later. Let's get into the playoffs, shall we? Okay, so we got Bubba Jenkins taking on Jesus Pinedo and Gabriel Braga taking on Movlid Habulayev, right? So Movlid Habulayev. So this is going to be uh, a good bracket for the featherweights. Um, my, if I had to put money on somebody in here, it would be a Habulayev or Habulayev. Um, Jesus Pinedo is a dark, dark horse here, and Braga obviously undefeated and uh, looking crazy. It's a tough division. Featherweights, uh, it's a hard division. Heavyweights. Uh, let's see here. You got Dennis Goldslav Hendon, um, taking on Jordan Heiderman. Weird. Weird. Yeah, Maurice Green got the win, uh, but he didn't make the playoffs. That sucks. Anyway, Marcelo Nunez taking on Hennon Frejeda. So, and Mateus Sheffield and Ante D'Elia both out. They were in the playoffs last year. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, light heavyweight. We got Josh Silvera. We covered this one before versus Ty Flores and Impa Kasangane taking on Martin Hamlet. Um, I think Silvera is probably the favorite and should be. Impa Kasangane looks good, but he's going to have a hard time with Hamlet. If he can get through Hamlet, I don't know if he can get through Silvera. Same with Hamlet. I don't know if he has anything for Silvera. We'll see. We'll see. Silvera just looks so good this year. Uh, Clay Collard. Um, he's going to be taking on Shane Burgos. Right. So remember how I said Shane Burgos wasn't going to be in the playoffs? I was wrong. So they suspended Natan Schult and Hausch Manfield, making them ineligible for the playoffs. Both of them both had three points, making it possible for them to go into the playoffs ahead of Burgos. I don't remember what the tiebreakers were, but they, they were going to go. Schult was supposed to go to the playoffs. Now he's not, and Shane Burgos is in. That's bullshit. Unless those guys signed on the dotted line and said, I'm willing to kill this guy who I consider my family because, you know, we have this is the the game that we're in and not because it's some arbitrary bullshit the PFL put out put out forward, uh, then so be it. Then you can punish them all you want. But I think this is horseshit. I don't think they should have fought. I think it's stupid. Then welterweight. All right. So you got Magomed Magomed Karimov uh, versus Magomed Umlatov. 
So that's going to be interesting. Um, actually, everybody in the playoffs here uh, did not lose in the regular season, so that's interesting. Um, Umlatov, you know, he could... See, this is so... It's such bullshit. <laughs> Sadabusi, because he got that finish in the last round faster than Umlatov got his finish, now he's facing... Now he's going to face uh, Leal instead of Magomed Karimov. So anyway... Uh, Leal, I, in my opinion, beat him last season in everyone's opinion, except the two judges who were there, uh, who gave it to see had it, even the AI system and everything, everything said that Leal won that fight, but then C got the decision somehow, uh, which is why I think they need to adjust their scoring system. I've talked about that before, uh, maybe partial points, uh, based off of split decision wins. Cause I don't think it's worth a split decision. win is not the same as a 15 minute ass whooping. We all know that, right? So then why would you get award that person the same amount of points? So Magomed Karimov, obviously the favorite here. Um, he's not as, doesn't look as dominant as he did uh, did in the previous, uh, or two years ago. But that being said, I think he's still, uh, he's going to be a real fucking problem. He hits hard. He's a good striker and his grappling's great. Uh, Umlatov is also great. So that's why it would have been fun to see, to see Sadabu try to take on Umlatov first instead of Leal. So he's getting the one guy in here who's not the biggest grappler. So, again, good luck with that. Anyway, um, Pacheco taking on uh, Kolesnik. Boy, I don't know how you think Pacheco's not going to win that one. I guess if you're crazy, you might think uh, Kolesnik. You know, Kolesnik could get the win if Pacheco gasses out, but her cardio uh, has lasted uh, pretty well. Whatever she's been on has been working really well for her cardio as well as her voice. Uh, Amber Liebrock taken on Marina Moknachnina. <clears throat> this one's interesting because Liebrock absolutely got dominated by Pacheco. Okay. And Aspen Lad's not in the playoffs. That sucks. But this sucks because, you know, Liebrock's in there because she's got that fast, a fast knockout win, but she, you, you could tell that she has nothing for Pacheco. So if she beats Moknachnina, like we just, it's a foregone conclusion. I mean, we, crazy things have happened, obviously, you know, with Pacheco winning last year. So, I don't know. We will see. Um, yeah, and then as far as the lightweights go, oh, yeah, I didn't even talk about that, <laughs> who I'm favoring in this. OAM would be my pick. I think he's got what it takes to beat everybody in this division. So, he he takes on Miranda first. Um, uh, I think he can beat him. Pretty uh Wait a minute. Hold on. Didn't Schultz get the win? Yeah. They counted as a loss for him, so it made him one and one. What the hell? Anyway, that's why they, they kicked him. Anyway, they kicked him out of the playoffs. I, it doesn't. That's bullshit. He was supposed to be taken on uh, OAM. It was supposed to be Natan Schalt versus OAM, which was going to be uh, a tough, tough task for OAM because OAM had a split, uh, split decision win against him last year. So against Bruno Miranda, you know, Miranda's got some skills, and he he has I he has some he has this is what it takes to give OAM some challenge. So if he comes out of this, I think Miranda can easily win this. Uh, Burgos, on the other hand, Burgos and Clay Collard, the fact that that is our first fight in this, uh, their first fight, that's a fucking banger, dude. I am really excited for that one. Burgos is a forward, <laughs> forward, forward, all action fighter. Clay Collard's forward, forward, all action. I am down. Let's do it. That's going to be great. Uh, Miranda and OAM is probably going to be more of a technical, like a, a chess match type of deal. We'll see how that one turns out, but I think whoever comes out of this two to three, um, two versus three bracket is probably going to be the champion. Uh, Clay Collard always has a puncher's chance, and his volume is crazy. So if he can stay on his feet, I think he can outlast and out, um, outland anybody in this division, um, except for maybe Shane Burgos. Uh, Burgos is, uh, he's not. He's they're not the same. They're not nearly the same. It's just they both have that you know, put their foot on the gas and do not let off of it. 
until they hear the bell uh, type of fighting style. So uh, that is it for the PFL breakdown. Uh, if you're look, I'm going to be doing the UFC one uh, later this probably late this weekend. So I'll probably put those out tomorrow. I'll watch the fights. It depends. I might put them out tonight. We sleep. If you see, if you see what we do. So if you're uh, looking for some other stuff, some other content, I put out the Ultimate Fighter episode breakdown. So I'm covering every episode of the Ultimate Fighter this year. Uh, if you're looking for the Bellator event, I have that from last week. I've got the PF. I've got a bunch of stuff. So if you're ever looking for a companion piece to uh, you watching an event, go ahead and check out uh, some of my older my older videos because I break them all down. Uh, so subscribe to this channel so you can find all that stuff. And you know when the next video is coming out, I'd super appreciate it. Love y'all. Have an amazing week.